Amen. 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 So y'all just going to stay up? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. That was some good singing, wasn't it? Amen. One of these days, you're going to have these masks off and we'll be able to hear you out there in the congregation saying that. Amen. But I heard them back here. Father, help us this morning. It's always our prayer, realizing that without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we are nothing. Give power to the preaching. Clarity and understanding. Yes, sir. That after we finish that the message will be clear mm -hmm. and we'll understand what you want us to know yes, so we can do what you want us to oh, do yeah. and be who you've called us to be. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you strengthen me in my physical body, yeah. that I'm able to hear this word, Lord, that your people will hear. Yeah. Anoint me afresh, O oh God, that the word will go forth with power. And with boldness, yeah. accomplishing your purpose as we continue this path with you. Yeah. Bless those that are joining us via Facebook and later YouTube. To God, that this message will pierce the hearts and the minds. And we thank you, Lord, that you do that. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, you will find these words. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. Hey, this is the father sitting in the big chairs in the morning. <laughs> The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Yeah. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, Get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough yeah. to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. We're going to talk about judging. Well, yeah. Amen. Amen. Judging. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about judging. Us as you may be seated and we thank you. <clears throat> we do understand that Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount. And there are many things that he has already talked about as it relates to higher ground living. Say higher ground living. Higher ground living. God has called his people to a higher standard of living. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, we find that Jesus said that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no way inherit the kingdom. There were Pharisees that bragged about the things that they were doing. And Jesus looked at them and said, you say you do these things, that is great. You should. Mm -hmm. But in doing them, yes, but you've overlooked the weightier matters of the law. Amen. Amen. So we're not 
called to no living. No. We're called to a higher living. We are called to a different standard, a different, different level. Yeah. That's right. That a higher moral standard that Jesus preaches and teaches to those that are to be his, his followers. Amen. So, we all know that. So how do I manage to, when I look at myself, how do I manage to see that I'm living that higher standard within myself? What do I do? What do I do, my brother, my brother Martin, so, so that I will appear to be living that higher standard? Well, the easiest way to do that, Brother Byron, is to judge others. Yeah. And as I'm judging others, then I don't look so bad, I do look better. And you'd be surprised at the amount of Christians that uh, base their place as a follower, not on the standards that Jesus said, but on the standards that they see and witness in others. Yes. And the easiest way is to be critical of everybody else. Yeah, that way, ain't all that bad. I'm better than him. I'm better than her. I don't do that. I'm looking at others, and I'm finding faults in them. When I find the faults in them, that takes the honors off me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y'all might as well dig in. I ain't going nowhere no time soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we do. That's the easiest way to appear to be in that place that God wants us. That's the easiest way to appear and to pacify ourselves. It's to find fault in others. Amen. Do you know that there are some people that are just looking for something? Amen. I mean, they don't stumble on it. They just be looking for it. They look it. And the truth is, if you look for something, what is that now? Jesus calls for the highest moral standard imaginable to his people. Yes, listen, because we have been given pearls. Yes, sir. Yes. Treasure. Yeah. And with that comes a higher standard. So, as I said, how shall we react to those who do, do not meet those standards since you're looking at them? Mm -hmm. You know, we spend more time looking out the window than looking in the mirror. Right. 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 Some of y'all blinds like mine got a little crease in the way it won't. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Nah, I shouldn't say that. My Bible study people know that. Uh, how do we react to those who do not meet those standards? Do you agree with me that there are some people that don't meet the standard that God sets? Okay, so. So this natural tendency that we have because we do, you know, sometimes we want to be more than we are. Yeah. Yeah. And the 
easiest way to look like that to ourselves is to be critical of other people. Amen. Right? Amen. So therefore, we find ourselves judging. Judging. Well, we like to say, the Bible say, judge not, don't we? When do we normally say that? You ain't sitting there while you judging somebody else. Jesus has a mandate for his disciples. Now, I got a question I'm going to ask you. Um, the Bible says judge not. And see, the thing is, we use that and sometimes people that want to live that lower level like to rest on this verse. But the Bible says to judge not. But it said, do not judge others and you will not be judged. Okay. So, is it ever right to judge? Yes. See, y'all don't want nobody to judge. Jesus says to his disciples here, as I just read it, he said, judge not, yeah. and you will not be judged. In your, in my Bible, there's a comma after, do not judge others. New Living Translation, you have a comma, yeah. not a period. Does, is that important? Yes. This is very important. That means you need to pause. Right. Right. And think about it. Yeah. And don't just run head first into it, right? Okay. Pause, think about it. Yes, he said this. Before you judge, there are some things that you, you should remember. Because he doesn't say you can't judge because even in verse 6 he just read where he said cast not your pearl before swine how do you know what's wrong? Without judging the swine. Say give not that which is holy to the God. How do you know? Mm. Unless you judge. Hmm. Dog, oh, real? Now I can't just rest on judge not. Yeah. That means I gotta step up my game. Yeah. I gotta try to live like God wants me to live. I can't keep telling people you can't, you ain't the judge of me. So then listen. This is what's important in this text. You said do not judge others, and you and you will not be judged. There is a prohibition against judgment. Christ makes it clear. That's right. He does not prohibit the judicial process of the courts. No, because he said you got to honor the law. Yeah, yeah. He does not prohibit the discerning use of our moral capacities. We ought to react to those things that are not right. What does he condemn then? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's important that you know. He condemns the attitude that is judgmental. He condemns that. He prohibits the censorous, harsh, self-congratulatory seeking of faults in others. You know what I'm talking about when you see something. I told you so. I told you they wasn't nothing. Uh -huh. yeah. I told you they wasn't 
about nothing y'all hear that all the time no. and then since y'all like to receive stuff what they do so we can pray for them That means if you do judge, 
You're going to be judged. He says in verse 2, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. That's the motivation not to judge, right? Oh man, that's some good motivation right there. If I had a list, we got a sign up sheet. Who wants to be judged? Sign up on this sheet. Who going to sign up first? And I know what you're saying. I ain't going to volunteer. I, I might just have to be drafted. <laughs> me first, me first, judge me, judge me, look at me, judge me. No. But you got to be, and that's why it's important for us because Jesus warns us. He said, listen, if you judge, you're going to be judged. Now, I'm not saying, I'm telling you not to judge because if you be judged, you're going to be judged. If you judge, you're going to be judged, and you're going to be judged by the same judgment that you judge others. That's true in life, and it's also true in godliness because, listen, if you judge harshly, you're going to be treated. If you treat people harshly, you're going to be treated harshly as well. It is true that if we are generous, we will find generosity. If we're critical, we'll be, we will be criticized. If we are merciful, we shall receive mercy. If we are forgiving, we shall be forgiven. Is that the way you say it? So we have a motivation for not judge. Jesus gives us a reason not to. And I think that's a pretty good reason, don't you? I know what some people say, I don't care what they say about me. I don't care what they think about me. And a lot of times we say that when we know we ain't walking right. And we just get mad and have an attitude about it. And I say to those that think like that, okay, they don't care. But you know who thinks more about that than they do? It's God. And eventually... You got to face and stand before him. Yes. Point number two. Remember the admonition for judgment. There's an admonition for judging. Jesus does not tell us to exercise no judgment. He does remind us that examination of self is always, always, say always. 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 Prior to judging others. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to look at yourself first. That's all he said. I know the pastor said a lot, but let me just make it clear. Let me break it down for you. You need to look at yourself, child. Look at the exaggeration that he makes between the speck of dust and the law. And what he says is this, how dare you not consider all that you got going on, but then you want to talk, look at something trivial in somebody else, and you, you, you got a, a storm raging in your own world, but you're looking at a little speck of dust in somebody else's. I mean, you're looking at, wait, wait, they took two steps with the right foot instead of one. You know, just something simple, like a speck of dust against a log. But you know, Jesus could say that because he knew people. And that's what we do, don't we? We got all kinds of stuff in our world. things in my life because I'm focusing on the little things in your 
I'm like, every little thing I'm looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what Jesus called that? Hypocrisy. A person that does that is a hypocrite. I'm talking about judging. The problem is this. It is not in our inability to see ourselves. That's not the problem. But what is the problem? It's our unwillingness to see ourselves. It's not that we can't, Reverend Jill, we just won't. Because if I look at myself, then I don't meet that standard. I don't, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, and I know that. So I won't look at myself. I keep looking at others. Amen. You know, like that spot on the uh, floor that you don't, you ain't going to clean up, so you just don't look at it? You just won't look at it. <laughs> Judge yourself first. Now, if we would do that, we wouldn't have a whole lot of time to be judging others, would we? Cain said, he 
because of sin? I don't know. Yeah, all right. Ain't my problem. Am I my brother's keeper? And the answer to that is yes. All right now. I ain't trying to trick nobody. Just go ahead and answer. You know the answer. Of course you're your brother's keeper. And the reason that I am to confront my brother is because I am my brother's keeper. So Jesus never said to leave sin neglected in the life of a brother. He never said that. Galatians 6. Read it when you get time. No. So just as a splinter in the eye can be irritating and dangerous, sin in the life of a brother can be spiritually irritating and blinding and dangerous. Oh, Amen. 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 So, when I first dealt, first dealt with the sin in my own life, I then in turn can turn to my brother with the spirit of grace and help him. Listen, judging is never for the reason of condemning. It's never for the reason of punishing. Judging is always for helping But see, we do it the wrong way. We do it because we're trying to hurt. But see, the judging is to help. When it's done in the spirit of love and in the spirit of God, it's, it's always helpful, not hurtful. I tell you not to go over that cliff because I don't want you to fall and hurt yourself. I tell you that the bridge is out, you need to slow down and be, and be prepared to stop because you're running wide open and you're not going to make it. That's because I am my brother's keeper. Yeah. So it's important that even as it relates to judging, that we deal with ourselves first and then we're able to help somebody because the Bible says in the book of Galatians 6, ye that are spiritual restore such as one. Yeah. Yeah. We're not to accuse our brother. But neither are we to excuse our brother. Yes, because we care. Because we care. Jesus talks to us even in that text, and he said there's an exception in judgment because he said, Don't give that which is holy to the dog. Don't cast your pearl before swine. Yes, it's important that we show moral discrimination. Yes. We need to understand and observe these things. Amen. But we ought to refrain from a judgment of spirit. We ought to refrain from a judgment of spirit. And to, re and to refrain from a judgment of spirit is not to refrain from moral discrimination. We see wrong and we see sin. In other words, if the eyes are open, you see it. So, because he does give us a prohibition against judging, that's not an excuse for us to live moral, lazy, and lackluster lives. No, just because uh, we want to throw out his I started the way we're going to end it, and I started, you judge not. No, he doesn't say that so we can live any kind of way and throw that up as a get out of jail free card and excuse to do whatever we want to do because we tell people. You're not supposed to judge. The Bible says judge not. But it's because of who we are. And it's because of whose we are. Christ reminds you of your possession. You possess a treasure. He inside of us. He's inside of us. That's the treasure. And then we need to appreciate our treasure. And we need to do what we can to help others with that treasure. Yes. Christ reminds you of your caution. Yes. Because the world may not respect your treasure. And the truth is, the world will not respect who you are. That's why you don't need to worry about judging the world. Yeah. We need to look out for one another. Yes. And the whole thing about judging is that there's a time and a place for all things. 
And there's a time that you ought to confront your brother to help him. And there's a time you ought to just ignore it and let it go. But listen to God. When you look at this message when it deals with judging, I know you had a different thought when we started. But this message can be summed up in three points here. The first thing I want you to remember and that you need to know, as believers, the first point of judgment is to judge ourselves. We're reminded every first Sunday when we, when we take communion that let a man examine himself. That is self-judging. If we will examine ourselves, if we will judge ourselves, the scripture tells us we shall not be or will not be judged. It also says that judgment begins in the house of God. So the thing about it as a Christian, instead of looking out to somebody else, instead of looking out the window, we should always look in the mirror because judgment begins with the thing. I've got to begin, I've got to look at myself and deal with myself. Second thing that stands out when Jesus is speaking, we live in judgment in a negative term or in a negative sense, but Jesus is speaking in a positive sense. In other words, the judgment that we judge is to help somebody and to bring restoration to a brother that has fallen. It is never to push somebody down. It is never to push somebody out. It's always to bring somebody in and it's always to pick somebody up. Amen. The third thing in our text, we got to understand who we are in him. Amen. And God has given us treasure. It says we have these treasure, or this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, we are just, as I said one time, we have this treasure in jugs of mud. That's all the earthen vessel is. But the treasure is what God has deposited in us. And because of that, I need to care about myself and I need to care about my brother. Yes, sir. Amen. And when I'm doing that in closing, I'm becoming more like Jesus. Yeah. You do remember, don't you, as I stated out of John chapter 8, when they brought the woman that had been caught in adultery, and the Bible and the law was that both he and the lady should have been put to death, but it looks like they just set her up for the fall, because they just brought her by herself. Ain't that what we do so many times? But Jesus did not condemn her. And, and, and you know, I'm glad that he did. But the truth is, she's not the only one that Jesus did not condemn. Have I got a witness? Because the Bible tells us he looked beyond our heart. And he met our need. So then when we're able to help somebody, the truth is, when Jesus saw us, yes. we were guilty as charged. Yes. And uh, the Bible says now that the wages of sin is death. Yes. But God's gift is eternal life. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. And we are Yes, Isaiah saw it. He said he was wounded. 
The door of our church is open. You're welcome to come. We have church every Sunday beginning at 10 